Last week we got a request for translation and when we got the document it was so poorly written that it was hard to even understand it in English. And it made me realize people need to know that good translation starts with good writing. So I've got 10 pointers that I want to give you here so you can make sure your English content is written well for translation. Rapport International, Professional Translation and Interpretation Services. Number one, be consistent. I speak American English. Uh, if I were to write any content with a friend of mine who's from the UK and we intermixed our words and our styles, that could be very confusing for the writer. Pick one and stick with it. Grammar. Keep your grammar simple, simple structure. Don't put compound sentences in there. Um, try to keep one point per sentence and w sentences with no more than 50 words. The reason for this is that it's easy for the translator then to get the meaning across. Number three, try to use nouns instead of pronouns. In English, we've got his and her programs, she and his. Um, we've got uh, possessive, you know, their possessive pronouns. They don't always translate. They can not be a feminine or masculine. So for example, in their house, everything comes in pairs. There's his car and her car, his towels and her towels, and his library and her library. In there, that's very easy, but to translate into Spanish, his and her is not defined by um, feminine and masculine, so it gets very confusing or it becomes a much longer sentence. Uh, number four, use articles in front of the noun. Use the the, the a, the uh, an. Um, that helps define it, uh, and that's uh, you, uh, included in many languages. So if you're clear about doing that in English, then it's included. Number five, this is a pet peeve of mine when it's in English, use active verbs. Uh, it's much clearer to understand and it's much more easy to translate. So for example, if I'm gonna send you information after this, you'd say, I uh, will send you information rather than you will be sent the information. Well, who's gonna send it? So even if I'm not gonna send it, I'm responsible for sending it and then it's active and it can be translated. Um, passive tense is hard, hard to read because you don't know who's doing the action. Dates, number six, spell it out. Spell out your dates. So for example, say I'm writing something about the 4th of July holiday here in the United States. Um, I could write 7-4 and we know it's July 4th. Uh, but in another country, they put the day first and then the month. So that would actually be April 7th. And that really could cause some confusion for people who want to celebrate an American holiday. Number seven, no ambiguity. We worked with a hospital whose tagline was, it's all about getting better. And so it's great for a hospital tagline. It um, talks about the hospital getting better, providing better services. It talks about the patients continually to improve and get better. We sent this off to the Haitian Creole translator and the translator said, well, I think it's about the hospital getting better. And the editor said, well, I think that's about the um, patients getting better. Both were right. One meaning had to be captured in the translation so we could actually take that back to the client and ask them which way they wanted to handle it. Number eight, watch for homonyms. So if you say it's too light, does that mean it's too light weight wise? Or is it too light in color? Or is it too light in brightness? It's a word that could have many meanings and so the translator is not gonna know which way to do it unless you define it. And while we're talking about things to avoid, uh, number nine is avoid all humor. It doesn't translate well. Um, avoid jargon, avoid abbreviations, ab avoid acronyms, avoid new words like FOMO, fear of missing out, LOMO, love of missing out. And number 10, finally, whether you're writing for translation or not, use good grammar, good spelling, and check for your punctuation. punctuation. Then you will have a well-written document that you can use for your content and can be translated. Happy to provide help. There's uh, more suggestions down below, but if you ever have any in particular, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to help. Thanks. Bye. If you found this video helpful, please share it, leave a comment, and subscribe. If you like hearing fun language and culture facts and goofs, use the link below to subscribe to our bi-monthly tidbit newsletter. And of course, visit our website for more information or to schedule a free translation assessment.